Hello everyone. So welcome back to our online lecture series. As a part of our online lecture series, in today's lecture we will be discussing about the enzymes. So when I was teaching you about the proteins in the last two lectures, so there also I discussed something about the enzymes. But in this lecture we will be discussing about the enzymes in detail like uh, how many types of enzymes are there and uh, how what is the mechanism of their action and what is the kinetics of enzyme action. So those are all the things that we will be discussing in the present lecture. So in chemistry we heard about the word catalyst right. So what is catalyst? So catalyst is nothing but a substance which is added to the reaction or the reactants to increase the rate of reaction or in other words you can say that to speed up the reaction. So in the same way the enzymes or the catalyst which will increase the rate of biochemical reactions. So these enzymes are nothing but a kind of functional proteins uh, which will perform the catalytic function. So when I was discussing about the proteins there I mentioned about the various kinds of proteins uh, like based on the function like there are structural and functional proteins and in functional proteins also we discussed about various proteins uh, various functional proteins depending on the on their function so in that already i mentioned about the enzymes which will, which will perform the catalytic function so like uh, we have seen the catalysis in chemical reactions that will catalyze or that will take part in reaction but it will not be consumed the catalyst will not be consumed during the reaction that means it will remain as it is at the end of the reaction. In the same way, the enzymes also will take part in biochemical reactions and they will increase the rate of reaction or they will speed up the reaction. But at the end of the reaction, these enzymes will remain as it is. So now we will see how these enzymes will influence the biochemical reactions with the help of a energy diagram. This slide already I have shown you during the proteins lecture. So when I was discussing about the functional proteins. So I'm not getting into much details of it now. But uh, just remember one thing that uh, here I have shown you on the left side that all the protein names will end with the word ASE. A -S -E. So like here I have seen sucrase, protease, lipase and DNA polymerase. So all the enzymes will end with the word ASE. A -S -E. So this diagram is nothing but an energy diagram. So basically it will show the energy of reactants and products. So if you see here basically there are two types of reactions. One is exorganic reaction and second one is the endorganic reaction. What is the difference between these two? So exorganic reactions are nothing but the spontaneous reactions and uh, endorganic reactions are nothing but the non-spontaneous reactions. That means these exorganic re in these re exorganic reactions what happens that the energy of the reactants is higher than the products. So whatever the energy difference is there between the reactants and the products so that is nothing but the free energy that we will denote by the delta G. So already we studied in thermodynamics at plus 2 level that if the delta G is negative if it is less than zero those reactions are spontaneous reactions so in this term so all these spontaneous reactions are exorganic reactions and in the same way if the delta G the energy difference between the reactants and products is higher is greater than zero if it is positive suppose then those reactions are called non spontaneous reactions or endorganic reactions so what happens during the exorganic reactions as the difference energy difference between the reactants and the products is negative that means reactants are having higher energy so during the reaction so they will release the energy but in the opposite way that this during the endorganic reactions the re energy of the reactants is lower compared to the product so when they are converting from reactants to products so they will consume the extra energy like in exor exorganic reactions they will release the energy and in endorganic reactions they will consume the energy. So this is the basic difference between the exorganic and endorganic reactions. So if you look at this diagram, this diagram will show the changes in energy in the presence or in the absence of the catalyst. So left side it is the energy of the substrate and right side it is the energy of product. Uh, in this the substrate is substrate energy is higher than the product energy so this is the example for exorganic reaction 
that means delta G will be negative so here I have shown the lines with two different colors one is the red color which has shown the reaction rate or the energy when the catalyst or the enzyme is absent and the second one is the blue color one which shows the reaction energy in the presence of enzyme or catalyst so what happens is that whenever we put catalyst or enzyme so what enzyme does here is that it will decrease the activation energy that is required for the product formation so by that way it will increase the rate of reaction so the energy difference between the substrate energy and the transition state energy that is nothing but the activation energy whenever the substrate converts to product so it will first it will go to the transition state and there it will form a transition complex so which is very much likely to unstable so that transition state is very much unstable and it is very difficult to I mean most of the cases it is very difficult to isolate the transition state or transition complex so first it will start from the substrate so these two reacts and then this will form a transition state and that tra from transition states to it will convert to the products so the whatever energy difference that is there from substrate to transition state so that is nothing but the activation energy so and the energy difference between the substrate and the product that is nothing but the delta g or free energy so what this enzyme does is here is that it will decrease the transition uh, transition state energy or activation energy so here you can see in presence of enzyme whatever i have shown in the blue color it shows the activation energy which is less than the activation energy of the reaction when the catalyst or enzyme are absent so that has been shown in red color so here one thing to remember is that this catalyst or enzyme it will only decrease the activation energy but it will it is not going to alter anything other than the activation energy the free energy remains same even in the presence or absence of the catalyst or enzyme so only the cat uh, transition state energy or the activation energy that will be decreased in the presence of catalyst or enzyme so this is also the graphical representation of the energy of the reactions in presence and absence of the catalyst or enzyme so left side you can see the red one which one which i have shown in red color that is the reaction energy in the absence of enzyme and right one right side that whatever green color i have shown that is the energy pattern in the presence of enzyme so you can see the activation energy decreasing when the enzyme is present and there is a increase in activation energy when the enzyme or catalyst is absent so this is all about the working mechanism in terms of the energy so with this so, so here part, you can so see the classification of enzymes uh, actually these enzymes have been classified into six major classes so one is oxidoreductases so these are the enzymes which will catalyze the oxidation and reduction reactions and the second category is transferases so these enzymes will catalyze the transfer of functional groups from one molecule to another molecule and the third category is hydrolysis so you have heard about the word hydrolysis so those hydrolysis reactions will be catalyzed by the hydrolysis and the fourth one is the lyases so these enzymes will catalyze the group elimination reactions to form the double bonds so and the next fifth one is the isomerases so isomerases we transfer the or transfer the molecule from one isomeric form to another isomeric form so they will catalyze the isomerization reactions through the bond rearrangements and the last one is sixth one is the ligases so these ligases will catalyze the bond formation reactions which couples with the ATP hydrolysis why I have mentioned ATP hydrolysis because ligases so these bond formation reactions will require some amount of extra energy so that energy will be taken from the ATP hydrolysis reactions so these are the six major classes of the enzymes so now we will see one by one in detail so here you can see the first class of enzymes that is oxidoreductases as I have mentioned in the previous slide that is these are the enzymes which will catalyze the oxidation and reduction reactions so if you see the reaction here 
what is happening here the l lactate is getting converted into pyruvate so if you see the structures the difference in structures in lactate and pyruvate so during this reaction two hydrogens are removed and converting converting this molecule lactate to pyruvate so here the enzyme that is being used is the lactate dehydrogenase so it is taking out the hydrogen so we know that removal of hydrogen is nothing but the oxidation so here oxidation reaction is taking place and that is getting catalyzed that is being catalyzed by the lactate dehydrogenase so here nad is the cofactor which will take part in the reaction so whatever the hydrogens that is that are being uh, removed from the lactate so those will be taken by the nad place so nad is nothing but the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide so that is a cofactor basically it exists in two forms nad plus and nadh plus h plus so nad plus is the oxidized form and nadh plus h plus is the redu reduced form so there are <clears throat> examples for this oxidoreductase enzymes so those are the oxidases peroxidases and dehydrogenases so these are all the th enzymes which will comes under the which will come under the oxidoreductase so the second category is transferases so these are the enzymes which catalyze the group transfer reactions if you see the, see the reaction here there are two molecules one is l alanine and ketoglutarate so what group is being transferred here so the amino group is being uh, getting transferred from l alanine to alpha ketoglutarate so this is nothing but the transaminase reaction so the enzyme that is transferring uh, participating in this reaction is the alanine transaminase so these are all the enzymes will which will come under the transferases so they will transfer one group from one molecule to another molecule so now we'll see the next one so next one is the hydrolysis so as i already mentioned that uh, these are the enzymes which catalyzes the hydrolysis reactions so here you can see pyrophosphate which which, which is having two phosphate groups and uh, these two pyrophosphate is getting hydrolyzed with the help of pyrophosphatase enzyme and it is getting converted into two phosphate groups so initially the, it is having two phosphate groups linking together with oxygen and uh, during this hydrolysis reaction it will break down into two phosphate molecules and uh, so all these enzymes like esterases peptidases and glycosidases these are all will come under the hydrolysis and the next one is so the next category is lyases so lyases are the nothing but the enzymes which will catalyze the elimination reaction if you see here here one pyruvate molecule is there and this pyruvate decarboxylase enzyme which is removing the carboxylate group from the pyruvate and it is converting this pyruvate into acetaldehyde plus carbon dioxide so here the pyruvate decarboxylase is eliminating or removing the carboxylate group from the pyruvate molecule and the next one is isomerases so isomerases are the kind of enzymes which will catalyze the isomerization reactions so here you can see alanine l alanine and d alanine so we know that these two are having the same molecular formula only the difference is that in l alanine the ammonia uh, amino group is on the left side and in d alanine it is on the right side so already i have discussed about all these things in the like, uh, regular classes that L means levorotatory and D means dextrorotatory. So these two are having the same molecular formula, but spatial position is different in these two molecules. So in one L alanine, the amino group is on the left, and in D alanine, it is on the right side. So this is nothing but the racemic mixture of the alanine. So this whatever the enzyme is it, so what it does, alanine racemase. So it will convert the L alanine to D alanine. So the next one is ligases. So these are the reactions enzymes which converts the ligation or joining reactions, joining of two substrates. So in this one, the first one is the L-glutamate and the second group is amino group. So ammonium group, whatever it is there here, NH4 plus. So this is being added to the L-glutamate molecule. So what is the 
enzyme here it is used glutamine synthetase so this glutamine synthetase is adding the ammonium group to the l-glutamate and it is converting it into l-glutamine so as already i mentioned that these are the ligation reactions or joining reactions or you can say bond formation is taking place in the reaction so for that bond formation whatever energy that is required so that energy will be taken from the atp so these are the six classes of enzymes six major classes of the enzymes so with this the enzyme classification part is over so in the next class we will see the mechanism of working mechanism of enzymes